So if you went out and bought yourself a brand new Apple laptop or desktop Mac, you might be wondering, how do I make the new computer look just like the old computer? Well, in this video, we're going to do exactly that. And don't worry, this process is actually pretty easy, but it can take some time. So definitely set aside enough time to do this process and you will not have access to the old Mac until it's complete. And I know it may sound daunting to migrate from one computer to another, but it's actually pretty darn simple. And this process has been around for quite some time. I've had extremely good success with it over the years. That's not to say that there can't be issues with it, but in general, it should work pretty well. And if you're watching this after already doing the initial setup on your new Mac, but you still wanna get your files and applications from the old one, don't worry, I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Now, there's actually a couple of different ways to migrate your data from the old computer to your new computer. The first option would be Time Machine. Assuming you have a full Time Machine backup of your old computer, then as we go through this process, you'll see where you can actually use Time Machine to do the restore on the new one. In my experience, especially in the last few years, Time Machine has been pretty unreliable for me as both a backup or restore or an option to basically set up a new computer from a Time Machine backup. So I don't think I would recommend it. I don't use it personally. The next option is setting up your new computer as a brand new computer and going through the process and then later going back and migrating your data and applications. Now this can be a much more invasive migration procedure because you have to figure out how to get your applications and data from the old one to the new one. You can use AirDrop for files, you can do USB drives, but a lot of the application data won't migrate seamlessly if you just try and move the application over. There's lots of files and folders in your hidden library folder that would not move along with it. So unless you're experiencing issues with your old computer or you know you have a lot of stuff that you just don't need on the new one, I probably wouldn't recommend this option either. And the third option is what we're going to be using today, and that is using the Migration Assistant, which will, as seamlessly as possible, migrate all of your applications and data and settings and everything from the old computer to the new one. This is by far the most seamless and quickest way to get up and running on your new Mac. So let's just get started with the process. And the first thing that you're gonna see right out of the box with your new Mac is going to be language selection. So we're just gonna go through the process over here and I'll explain things as needed. So we'll just hit next for English for me. You choose your own language, of course. And here we're gonna select where we are. I'm in the United States, so I'll select that. Accessibility options, you can roll over these and click on these if this is something that you need. I'll just click not now for now. And this is where you will select your Wi-Fi connection and I'll go ahead and sign into mine right now. Next, Apple's informing you some information about data and privacy, continue. And here is the start of the migration assistant. And you'll notice down here, you have a couple of different options. You can do from Mac, a time machine backup, or from a startup disk. When you transfer from a startup disk, that's assuming you have another startup disk inside your computer or your hard drive has been partitioned into multiple bootable operating systems. And that's how you can transfer from one of those into the other. The next option is Time Machine Backup, which we talked about. And the third option is going to be transferring from another Mac, and that's what we're going to do. Now, if you do need to transfer from Windows, there are some limited files you can transfer from a Windows PC, but that would be a different video. So we will click on Continue. Now it's warning you that you probably wanna to connect to AC power. This process can actually take quite a while to complete. So if you don't have a fully charged battery or a good battery, especially on your old laptop, then you're gonna to wanna to connect to AC power. Now the new computer is looking for other computers in the area to migrate data from. So when you're migrating data from the old computer to the new computer using this method, there's actually three different ways or mediums you can use to connect the two computers together. The first one is going to be a direct Wi-Fi connection. These two computers will connect directly using Wi-Fi, bypassing your wireless router and other things on your network, and just transfer the data directly from one to the other. Now this is actually the slowest method of transferring the data and it's not my recommended path. But if you have no other options, it will work. It's just going to take a bit longer. The second option is going to be using Ethernet. Well, as you can see, both of these computers and probably your Mac does not have Ethernet connections. So if you want to use Ethernet to transfer from one computer to the other, you're going to need a Ethernet dongle for each of these computers and a one gigabit Ethernet connection to connect the two of them. Now this option is faster than the Wi-Fi, but it's not as fast as our third option. The third option is going to be connecting a Thunderbolt 3 cable between the two computers. This is by far the fastest method to do the data transfers between the two of them. And if you don't have an ethernet cable at home, I will leave a link in the description below to one that I recommend. So right now I'm just going to connect to the new computer. I'll wrap this around and connect it to the old one. 
There we go. So with these two computers connected with a Thunderbolt 3 cable between them, we can now open Migration Assistant on the old computer. So to do that, you're going to go into your Applications folder or Launchpad. You're going to look for a folder called Other, and you're gonna click on Migration Assistant. And Migration Assistant is going to be used to transfer all of the data over for you. So we'll click Continue, and you're gonna type in your password. And what it's gonna do now is it's actually going to close all of the applications and log you out of the system. And that's because you need to be fully out of everything to be able to migrate it. If a file or folder or configuration settings are open somewhere, those won't be able to be migrated over. So it does it for you. And right here you can see right now with Migration Assistant, you can say, I wanna to transfer to this Mac. Well, I don't wanna to transfer to this Mac because this is the old one. So I wanna to transfer to another Mac. We'll click continue and it's warning you again about AC power, continue. And now these two devices are discovering each other. So the new computer now sees the old computer over here. So you can see it right here. We'll go ahead and click on him and click continue. And now what you can see is a code shown on both of these laptops to make sure that you're actually transferring to or from the computer that you expect. So the code is the same. So we'll click continue on the old one. And now the old computer is going to start scanning itself. It's scanning for files and for users and everything else that you might wanna transfer from the old computer to the new. This will take just a couple minutes to complete. So on the new computer, now you can see a list of all of the things available to migrate over. You get your applications, you get your users, you get other files and folders, which is really application data and configuration settings, and you get your system and network information right there. So that's things like sharing preferences and computer name and whatnot. Down at the bottom, you'll see some information about how much data will be transferred if you migrate everything. And here's an example. If your new computer has a smaller hard drive or you're trying to transfer more data than will fit on the new computer's hard drive, you may have to deselect some of that information. So you can do that easily by drilling down into the folder or item you don't need to transfer and deselect it. On this one, I'm going to select everything and continue. And right here, it's going to have you set passwords for the administrative users. So I am an admin user on this computer. It wants me to set a password. Now this can be the same password as you have on your user account on the old computer. It could be a new password. It doesn't matter, you just have to set one. So after setting the admin password, you'll see other user accounts down here that are non-admin accounts. And what happens with these is they get a temporary password for them so that the first time that that user logs in, they'll need to use that temporary password and then they'll be told to change the password after they first log in. So you're going to want to write down that password for those users, or you can go ahead and take a picture of it with your phone and you know use that for logging in later. And when we're done with that, we'll click continue. And yes, I did save that password, so I'll click continue again. And now the migration is going to start. So during this migration, everything that you selected previously, the applications, the users, the system information, all of that is going to migrate over. And you can see down here at the bottom, we are connected with Thunderbolt. And down here, you can click on connection details and you can see what I mean, where Thunderbolt is going to be much faster. So with a Wi-Fi direct connection, it was estimating about two megabytes per second of transfer speed. With Ethernet, about 41 megabytes per second. And with Thunderbolt, looking at over one gigabyte per second transfer speed. That is way faster than the other options. So I highly recommend that you pick up a Thunderbolt 3 cable if you don't have one. Now this process is going to take some time. It says one hour, four minutes now. That's gonna go up and down drastically as this progresses, but it's probably, I'm guessing for this amount of data, only gonna take about 15, 20, 25 minutes. And we'll see what it looks like when we get back. And now we just wait an indeterminate amount of time, especially if you're using Wi-Fi. So you gotta find something to keep you busy. done. Well, it's a nice surprise. This actually only took about 12 or 15 minutes. So actually pretty quick on this migration. You can see over here, the new computer is going to restart in just a few seconds. And when it does, it will come back up to finish the initial setup process. So we'll go ahead and let that reboot and then start in just a minute. Okay, so we are rebooted and in just a moment, yep, there we go, migration has completed. And you'll see over here, migration completed on the old one as well. We'll click done over there and we can disconnect that Thunderbolt 3 cable. And then the 
Setup Assistant will continue probably with Touch ID. Okay, Apple ID. So we need to sign into our Apple ID. Now, while this is signing into iCloud, I do wanna point out that doing this migration does create a little bit of a blip, it seems, with the iCloud accounts. So it almost seems like this computer thinks it's this computer and iCloud sees two computers that are the exact same trying to talk to it at the same time and it doesn't like that. So normally what happens is the old computer is gonna start to get pop-ups when you log in to say, hey, you need to re-sign in or re-authenticate iCloud on this computer. And sometimes that is a little bit finicky. My recommendation is you just let that sit for a bit until you're done setting up your new computer and then go back and do the sign in or the re-authentication on the old one. That will probably make it go a little bit smoother. Otherwise, it acts just a little bit weird. With the analytics, you can choose to send it to iCloud or not. We'll just hit continue. And here's Touch ID, and I'm sure at this point you know how to set up Touch ID. Next, Apple Pay, we're gonna set that up later. There you go, as you can see, both computers look the exact same at this time. So right now we're getting a little bit of an error because of the naming over here on the old computer. We'll just hit okay, and we should be okay. So at this point, all of your user data and applications and files and folders and everything, all your settings and configurations should have moved from the old computer to the new computer. So you are basically ready to rock and roll and get back to work. Now, I do wanna point out that like the iCloud, there are some little issues that you may run into probably to do with app compatibility. Now, if you're coming from an older computer with a, say an Intel processor and going to something like the Apple Silicon Max, you may have to install what's called Rosetta. And that's just something that allows you to be able to run older apps on the newer Mac. A lot of apps have been updated in the last couple of years and they basically contain the code for both the Intel and the Apple Silicon. So you won't need to do anything with those. And some may just need to be updated to the newest version. Also, when doing a migration like this, most applications should work just fine, but if you purchased third-party applications from say Adobe or any other third-party software site, you may have to reactivate those applications on the new one, and you may have to deactivate those apps on the old one. So that really is going to be dependent upon the application specifically. But if you got things from say the Mac App Store, those should migrate and work no problem without having to worry about any of that. And for that error message that popped up just a moment ago, you can see that the old computer is MacBook Air 2 and the new one is MacBook Air 3. So it resolved that issue by itself. And you can see on the old one, I am now getting an error or alert about my Apple ID on the old one. So again, I would just wait just a little bit before you do anything with that. Start working on this one, make sure everything's moved over that you expect, and then later go back and fix this issue with Apple ID. So now, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you already set up your new Mac without going through this process and migrating, but now you wanna go back and bring your old data applications and files and whatever from the old computer to the new computer, this is how you do that. Just like before, you're going to open up Migration Assistant on both of these computers. You're going to go to the Applications folder or Launchpad, click on Other, and then click on Migration Assistant. You'll hit Continue on both of these, type in your passwords, and then like before, it's going to log out of everything on these computers so it can do a migration. On the new computer, you're going to want to select from a Mac. And then on the old computer, you're going to select to a Mac. And now you will be able to follow the process that we already went through and transfer all of the data from the old computer to the new existing user profile on the new computer. But we're not gonna do that right now. We're just gonna hit quit, but you should have no issues with running that. Awesome, so that is the simple, easy, straightforward process to migrate from an old Mac to a new Mac. What'd you think, was it easier than you thought? Now, an eagle-eyed viewer might have realized that this is an older Intel MacBook Air and this is a newer M1 MacBook Air. And why do I have an older Intel MacBook Air? Well, stay tuned to the channel if you're curious about that and definitely hit subscribe. So now that you're fully up and running on your brand new Mac, you may wanna reconfigure your whole desk setup like I did. And if you're interested in that, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.